So hi everyone, um, and uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, my work uh, with uh, Professor Naftali Tishbi um, about the connection between deep neural networks and the uh, information theory. So let's start. Um, I don't need to tell you why deep neural networks are important, right? <laughs> Um, the problem is that we don't have a strong theory behind it. We don't know why they work so well. Um, and today I will try to, to suggest that we can look on deep neural networks from an information theory perspective. Um, let's start. We have this uh, simple uh, neural network with uh, some uh, input and some uh, output and uh, labels. And we can look on each one of the layers as a random variable. And we can look on the encoder uh, of each of the layers and the decoder of each of the layers. So the encoder is just encodes the input to this layer. And uh, you can think of it as uh, if you look on the information of the encoder is uh, the complexity level of, the, of this layer, uh, and you can look on the decoder from this layer to the labels, uh, and you can think of it as the generalization, label, the, the generalization la la level of, the, of this layer. So what we actually uh, did is to look on this uh, information in real uh, networks. So we have here something that we call the information plan, x-axis is the information with the input, and y-axis is the information with the labels, and we took a simple uh, uh, deep network with uh, six layers, and we um, did 50 random initializations. Uh, so here, each one of the colors is a different layer, and we will see a, a movie uh, that we will see the information in the network during the, the training process. So, great. So we can see two distinct phases. The first phase of increasing in, in the information with the labels, and then after the point concentrated around some point, we can see a very slow uh, compression phase that we compress our representation. Now, Okay, so now we can look, it's the same uh, information plan, but now we averaged uh, over all the initializations, and here the different uh, colors are the different epochs, so the black one is the, the beginning, and the yellow one is uh, the end of the training process, and we can see here again the two phases, the fitting to the labels, and then the slow compression uh, phase that we compress our model, all the layers, compressed their information with the input. Um, so this was a macroscopic uh, view on the network. Now we can look on a microscopic view. Uh, so we looked on the gradients, and we look on the mean of the gradients and their variance, or if you want, uh, the signal and the noise in the gradients. Um, and again, uh, each here, each line, each color is a different uh, layer, and it's a function of the epochs. Uh, it's in a log-log scale. And we can see here again two distinct phases. The first phase, when we have high SNR, when the means are uh, high. And the second phase, when we have a low SNR, when we dominated by the noise uh, in the gradients. And uh, the interesting thing is that this transfer point is the same point as in the information plan. And of course, the question is why? What is the connection between the two, right? So to answer this, um, let's start with some intuition. So we have this, um, this uh, surface, this low surface of our uh, network. It's a very high dimensional, uh, complex, uh, complicated uh, surface, and we start with some uh, random point in it. Uh, and now in the first phase, actually, we have a very strong signal where to go, a very strong signal uh, in which uh, direction we need to go. So we actually, we will follow very quickly to one of these valleys. So 
we will fall after only a few steps to one of these valleys. And now, in the second phase, we are already in this valley. And actually, we don't have now a strong signal where to go. And we, we will do, we will have a lot of directions that are irrelevant to our loss, that if we change them, we will not affect our loss. So we will do something that's similar to random walk in these directions. And this random, uh, this random walk actually will increase the noise in these directions and brings to, to compression in, this, uh, in these directions. OK? So we have the irrelevant uh, directions that we can go in the surface and the relevant directions that we will not, uh, that we will not compress. So this was the intuition. And uh, now let's go to some, back to the theory. So the information bottleneck method is a general framework. that actually say something very simple. Um, you have, if you want to find a good representation uh, of your input, you need to compress it as much as possible. And in the same time, to capture the relevant information uh, about your labels. So uh, this actually, you need to solve this uh, minimization problem. When the first term is your uh, information with the input you want to compress, and the second is the information with your labels. Now, uh, this, uh, so the, the, the information bottleneck actually gives us an optimal bound, an optimal information bound on, uh, in this uh, information plan. So we cannot go above this, uh, this optimal bound, and we have some trade-off between compression and prediction. And now we can look on networks in this, uh, in this plan and look uh, how close is it to, uh, to the optimal bound. OK, now let's return to the learning algorithm, to, to, to the stochastic gradient descent. And uh, using some uh, information uh, theory bounds, we can decompose the, the, the action of the, of the SDG over the layers. And now we can look on each one of the layers. And actually, we can look on this stochastic differential equation as a, as a continuous version of the SDG. So what we have, so for each, in each step, what we are doing is just to, uh, we have the, the first term that is actually the true, uh, the true gradients, where we need to go, our signal, plus some noise, some Gaussian noise that actually depends on the covariance matrix of the gradients. So we, at the first, uh, um, in the first phase, this term will be dominate, uh, and at the second, uh, at the second uh, phase, we will dominate it by the noise in the covariance matrix of the gradients. Good, but why, we, why, is it why is it important for us? Because under some assumptions about the noise of the covariance matrix, about the gradients, the noise in the gradients, we, we know, we actually can prove that it will converge to something that's called Gibbs distribution, to random walk um, with some, uh, with some uh, constraint. Uh, and this Gibbs distribution is a very famous distribution. It's a, it's a minimizer of the free energy. And the free energy, apparently, that in our case, is exactly the information bottleneck bound. So at the end, we're, we are getting that the SDD actually will converge to the optimal information bottleneck bound. And in the second phase, when we uh, have a high noise, we will compress our representation. OK, that's, uh, that's nice. So we saw that the SDD actually will compress our representation to the optimal one. The next question that we ask is, in which directions I will, uh, I will compress? And I don't have a lot of time, but uh, actually, so we, what we, we did, we, look, we looked on the Gaussian channel between the, between the layers. So we have some uh, optimal solution for each layer. We have some optimal solution plus some uh, Gaussian noise that uh, depends 
on the SCN of this specific layer. And so you can imagine you have, we have this, uh, the, the covariance matrix of, uh, of this uh, Gaussian. And in this, uh, this covariance, we have some broad, um, broad uh, uh, directions. And these are exactly the irrelevant directions. So in the irrelevant directions, the directions that are irrelevant to our loss function, that if we change them, we will not affect our loss function, we will see a, a very fast diffusion. And this diffusion actually will, uh, will inject noise to, the, to these uh, directions. And when we are looking on the capacity of, the, of our uh, channel, of our gas and channel, we will see that this uh, injecting of noise will decrease the information exactly in the irrelevant direction, the direction that will not uh, influence on our loss. Um, okay, so just, just to conclude, uh, it's very simple. We have, we have a noise in the irrelevant directions. We have a very fast diffusion in their irrelevant di directions, and this diffusion will compress only the irrelevant directions, and we will keep uh, the, the relevant uh, information. Um, now, let's see, I want to, to show you a, a movie, so let's see how actually the, this compression of the irrelevant directions um, looks like. So what we did is very simple. We took the output of, uh, of, uh, of the layers, of each one of the layers, and we did the TSNE. It's a very simple um, method for a dimension reduction. Uh, so each one of the points here um, is, a, is, a, is one example in our data set, and the colors are um, the, the prediction of the, of the labels. Uh, of the of the network, and we will see how what is the what are the changes during the the learning. So we can see that we start with some uh, random, uh, equally random uh, um, distribution over this uh, over the space, and now we can see. So this is the first layer of our. So this is the first. This is the first layer of our uh, our network. So we will see actually exactly the compression. Oh, sorry. Okay. Now, so we will see exactly the compression. So it starts randomly, and then slowly we will see the compression that it compressed to some clusters. Over the over the space that we at the end we will have some clusters that point that are similar uh, with their labels will be at the same at the same clusters at the same cluster. Um, so you can see we have this uh, random walk random walk and we compress the irrelevant directions and. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, Let's, I don't, yeah. So um, red, so red points, okay, so red points are uh, examples that are one, that the, the, the labels uh, is are one, and the network also predicted correctly, um, and, the, and black points are zeros and the network predicted correctly, and yellow, uh, are points that the network doesn't know how to classify them. Okay, so we, we can see this compression, we see this clustering, and now let's see what is happening in deeper layer in the network. So this, no, it's the same. Let's, okay, and now we can see, now it's a deeper layer in the network, and we will see what is happening. It's also start uh, almost randomly, but now we can see that actually the network compress the irrelevant directions, and we will just um, actually fall into on, uh, almost one-dimensional uh, um, manifold of 
our problem. Only the relevant uh, directions in our problem will stay and we will compress all the others. Okay, so we can see that this compression and it's now it's only it's almost one dimensional and we can see that it cluster uh, co it clusters correctly the these points and it clusters correctly these points and some in the middle it doesn't know how to to classify them. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that's it. So to summarize, uh, we saw two distinct phases, uh, both in the, in the information and in the gradient, uh, fitting and compression. Uh, and we tried to explain the connection between them and how the STD converge to, to the optimal information bound and what is the, uh, in which directions we will compress our information. Thank you. Questions?